Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Caroline Makes Cards. I have two Christmas cards to share with you today featuring Spellbinders Hex Kaleidoscope die sets. My favorite part are the layering tiles that are included with both die sets. They provide an element of dimension just taking these sets to the next level. Absolutely gorgeous, so let's get started. For this first card, I'll be working with Hex Kaleidoscope Slimline. All my die cutting was done off camera. For the first card, I used white cardstock, soft pink, and a brushed gold. This panel is quite fine, and I thought that glue would be very challenging, so I ran it through my Xyron Creative Station. I have a smaller sticker maker by Xyron and decided to run the tiles through it, but really that wasn't necessary. They could be easily glued together. Before I remove the clear film, I take some time to burnish each of the elements just to make sure that there's good contact between the cardstock and the adhesive. The upside of using these adhesive tools is that you are literally turning these die cuts into stickers. No worrying about that liquid adhesive oozing out from those fine die cut lines. So the other positive point is that the adhesive is repositionable for a while. So as I am applying my die cut to the panel, if it wasn't aligned, I actually could lift it off and redo it. But there is a bit of a drawback if your elements have lots of die cut openings like this one. In some areas, the glue stretched across those openings. It wasn't visible, but when I ran my hand across the panel, there were some areas of stickiness. I found Couture Creations Creative Detailer effective at removing that glue. You could also use Xyron's Adhesive Eraser. So that experience prepared me for putting the layering tiles together. As I put one layer upon another, I first used my craft pick just to make sure that there was no glue in the die cut openings. These three layer tiles are just gorgeous. I started off with a brushed gold base followed by soft pink and then finished up with white. The layered tiles will add a beautiful element of dimension to this card. Of course, the base layer also has the adhesive backing and I just need to pop those directly on my card. I often will adhere my panels to foam before they go on the card base. Of course, I love the added dimension, but it also makes the card a little bit more sturdy. I let the glue set up for a while before I trim off the excess foam. It is then attached to a card base of Nina Classic Press 110 pound cardstock that measures eight and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. I'm going to be using a sentiment from another Spellbinders die set called Silent Night Make a Scene. This one piece sentiment is too long for my card, so I'm going to trim the words apart. The sentiment has been die cut from both the soft pink and the brush gold cardstock. I'm going to slightly offset them so just a touch of the gold shows through. These sentiments are quite fine and so I'm going to put some Tombow glue on them, set it aside to dry, the glue will be tacky and repositionable. And that will make stacking these sentiments a whole lot easier. The Tombow glue had also been applied to the base sentiment, which is the one in the gold cardstock. So I can just simply pop it on my card. It is repositionable, so it gives me some flexibility to make sure I've got it aligned the way I want it. This card is finished up with some pretty pink confetti in the center of the tiles. Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew not only tops up the confetti, 
but is used as an accent for the dot detail around the perimeter of each of the tiles. And that completes this first card using Spellbinder's Hex Kaleidoscope Slimline Die Set. So now on to card two. I used the perimeter die from the previous die set to cut a panel. The main die for this die set are three tiles that are connected together. I want to extend it so that it is the full length of the slimline panel, so I'm going to be doing some piecing. I'm going to begin by adhering the main die cut to the panel. I have my panel lined up on my grid so I can use it as a reference to try to get this die cut centered top to bottom and left to right. It isn't perfect and I do end up having to do a little bit of trimming. I die cut a second set of tiles so that I could trim them to add one to the top and one to the bottom of my panel. The panel is flipped over to trim the excess. To make sure that the hexagon die cut is flush, I make sure that I push the blade of my scissors right up against the edge of the panel. All of my die cutting was done off camera. This set includes a die that creates nesting diamonds, which I have used to cut several out of brushed silver cardstock. When I put all the triangles back together, I use a little bit of scotch tape to hold all those die cuts in place. These pieced elements are run through the die cutting machine. It just helps give the surface a nice, consistent, flat appearance. The bar detail that is between the hexagon tiles has also been die cut from the brushed silver cardstock. When adhering the nesting diamonds, a little bit of a border is left between them and the hexagon tile die cut edge. The flat cutoff point of the diamonds on the right hand side of the panel will be flush with the panel's edge and I will only have to trim down the left hand side. This will provide a more symmetrical appearance. And now for the layered tiles. I'm going to start with the partial tiles on either end of the panel. I'm going to layer them directly on the panel because they will have to be trimmed down and I don't want to have to try to cut through layers of cardstock. After the silver base tile is trimmed, the next layer, which is out of soft blue cardstock, is added. Again, this is trimmed down, and then the final layer out of white cardstock is added. The remaining full tiles are stacked before they are adhered to the card. The tiles are centered and adhered in the middle of each hexagon opening. The panel is adhered to sheet foam and then onto brushed silver cardstock slightly larger than the panel for a narrow reveal. Then it's ready for its card base which measures the same as the other card, 8 and 3 quarter inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches. The Sentiment Happy Holiday from Spellbinder's Mosaic Bracket Card Builder was die cut from both white cardstock and foam. The foam die cut is left intact in its background with just the center of the letters removed. After a thin layer of glue is applied to the die cut, I can easily align the cardstock one to it. The foam die cut has a slight depression which makes it easy to pop the cardstock one on top of it. I used just a little bit too much glue so I pick that up with my paper towel. I can then use the craft picked in the letter openings to make any final adjustments. After both words are mounted on the foam, I do set it aside for some drying time before I remove the excess. Again, with the use of the craft pick, the sentiments are easily removed. I lightly apply glue to the back of the sentiments and they are adhered over the middle tile at an angle. 
the circle detail on the tile border die cut is accented with silver confetti. And that completes the second card featuring Spellbinder's Hex Kaleidoscope Tile Die Set. I love how these two die sets work together. The tiles can be interchanged between them and they are versatile and can be used for any occasion. Just change up that sentiment. I hope you enjoyed this video featuring Spellbinder's Hex Kaleidoscope die sets. Thank you for dropping by and as always, I appreciate your visit.